Okay, it's Henry again, and this is going to be my work in progress video for the 1 to 100 scale Barbatos Lupus Rex. And as you can see, I have uh, just finished snapping them together and uh, getting ready to uh, uh, get him prepared for paint and stuff. So, there aren't a lot of seam lines on this kit, very few. Uh, there's one that goes all, all along this uh, tail thing. And I actually uh, did a little trick to fix it. Uh, this yellow part goes inside the white part, but both of them have seam lines. So what I did is I just cut the connectors uh, on the yellow part and filled in the seam line, filled in the seam line, and then uh, after I paint them, I can just slide them together and voila. Uh, I'll have to mask off this little gray part back here, but that really won't be difficult at all. So, did that. Uh, I shaved off the little nubby things on the end of the V-fin, made that a little bit pointier. And one other thing I'm going to do uh, in preparation before I start painting is uh, these god-awful gaps in the fingers. Uh, the hands otherwise look really, really good, but they have these hollow parts in the fingers, as you can see there, which I am uh, filling in. I've just got a little bit of epoxy putty and I'm putting a bit into each one of these little holes and then once that uh, cures I can just sand that down and smooth it out and that'll be ready for paint because nothing really bugs you like hollow parts on a model kit. Nobody wants that. So, very simple, very easy fix. Kind of tedious. I feel like they probably could have just made the fingers solid if they really wanted to, but Bandai wanted to save money on plastic, so we got hollow gaps. But if we didn't have that, then where would the challenge be? Just be snapping it together and throwing some paint on it and not having to do any real modeling work at all. Well, I guess painting is real modeling work, but it's good to do stuff like this every now and then to keep yourself in practice. Sometimes we get spoiled by newer kits with uh, that hardly have any problems at all, hardly have any seam lines at all. And uh, before you know it, you are out of practice, so it's good to do stuff like this from time to time. Okay, so now that all the seam lines and stuff are taken care of, I'm now uh, doing some battle damage. Now for my last several kits, I've just done the weathering uh, with paint, but on my first Barbatos I did a couple years ago, I actually did uh, physical damage to the kit uh, before I painted it, and that's what I wanted to do with this Lupus Rex as well. So, right now I'm just going in and adding some bullet dings and a lot of people when they first start out uh, doing battle damage on their gunpla they think oh let me just get a soldering iron and uh, poke my kit with it well the problem with that is that it looks really obvious everyone can tell that you just took a soldering iron and poked your kit with it uh, I like doing bullet dings with a hobby knife because it doesn't give a perfectly round bullet ding. It gives them more uh, visual interest, and you don't get that raised lip of melted plastic. I don't, I don't like melting or applying heat to plastic at all. It's just not something that really. Uh, appeals to me. I don't like the way plastic acts when it melts, so it's something I actively avoid. But uh, I'm just doing this. I basically just go in and uh, do like a circular motion like that. And if I can zoom in, you can probably see these a little bit better. And then you've got 
some nice and you've got a whole lot of control when you're doing it this way uh, you can do like different little radiated uh, shatter patterns on these bullet dings there's a line of three of them right there and uh, I just like using the hobby knife a whole lot more there's some on the shorter armor also I've been taking my uh, Tommy Ascriber and doing some cracks that are probably not going to show up quite as well. There's a crack right there. You can kind of see it. I uh, did another one. I did uh, several cracks radiating out from the bullet holes. So got some of that going on as well. There's some nice battle damage on the arm there. So, just doing some uh, really specific pinpoint battle damage right now. And now that I've done some uh, specific weathering, I'm going in with my Dremel tool and just doing some uh, general weathering uh, all over the surface of the kit. Basically, uh, chipping, but actually altering the plastic instead of just paint. Pretty much the same idea. And let's, I wonder if I can zoom in on this. Let's see. Maybe it'll, uh, there we go. Just doing some stuff like this. Right along the edges. Places that would be easily damaged. And all this excess plastic, I can just wipe that away. That's the exact same thing I did on my first Barbatos. I'm going to do one last modification before I get to painting. Uh, I was looking at the hands and I noticed that the claws look kind of dull. They honestly really just had a rounded end to them, which is kind of a thing Bandai does with like high grades and no grades. Uh, sort of like how they put the tabs on the end of the V-fins. I guess they don't want anything too awfully pointy on the lower grade kits. So, uh, what I've done is I sanded down the end of the claws a little bit to make a flat surface and then I cemented on some little bits of uh, plot plate just a little two millimeter wide uh, chunks like that and then I've gone in with uh, my sandpaper and a hobby knife and cut and sanded them down until you get a nice sharp point like so so that definitely looks a whole lot better than it did on the original. So I've basically just been taking these and going in with my hobby knife and, or not hobby knife, my nippers and just sort of cutting, doing a rough cut to get the general shape. Like so. And then I'll go in with my hobby knife after that and refine it a bit more, basically just getting it even to the uh, the gray plastic. And I'm being mindful to uh, cut toward the uh, gray part because I'm afraid if I cut in this direction that uh, these little pieces of white plot plate are just going to come off because although they are cemented on it's a very small space a very small surface area that has cement on it so these could still potentially break off if I'm not careful so carving it down with the hobby knife and then going in with some sandpaper and sanding it down nice and smooth and making it perfectly even to the gray parts. 
and then just going all around like so down at the bottom until I get the uh, shape I want. And then I'm just going to go in with uh, some finer grits and smooth everything out so it doesn't have a bunch of scratches on it. And at that point, uh, that's all there is to it. I just got to finish up on all the other fingers. Okay, I decided to skip over the airbrushing process on this work in progress video uh, for two reasons. One, you guys have seen me airbrush kits like a million times at this point, so it's not really anything new. And number two, uh, there's going to be quite a bit of this video dedicated to weathering. So just to cut down on the total video time, I decided to skip on the, uh, the airbrushing part because I didn't really do anything fancy or new or anything with the paint job. Just did some pre-shading like I usually do and yeah, pretty basic. Went with the original color scheme and now I am doing the decals. So, I'm going pretty minimal on the decals for this kit, not, uh, not trying to do anything terribly complicated, because with all the battle damage and weathering that's on here, it's visually going to be busy enough without the decals, so I'm just adding the bare minimum as far as decals go. Because I don't want it, the kit to be just a big visual mess when it's all done. I don't want there to be too much going on. So it's probably the fewest number of decals I've put on a kit in a long, long time, other than the kits that I didn't put any decals on. So got a few here and there. Like for example, on the arm here, I've just got one decal on the side of the arm, and then I've got like one on this back piece. Uh, I think that each leg just has five decals on it, two on the side, or four, two on each side, and then one in the front. So, I think just four decals on each shoulder armor. And after I get these finished up, uh, then I am going to actually do chipping first. And why am I telling you this now? I can just cut to the next part of the video. Okay, so now it's time for the chipping, and last few kits I've done, last several kits actually, I've just been doing straight brush chipping, uh, except for that little uh, Origin gun tank I did here, spray chipping, and I'm definitely going to get back to that one day, but for this one I'm changing it up a little bit. Uh, uh, as you remember earlier in the video, I damaged the kit with the uh, Dremel to do uh, some banged up edges and I went in with the hobby knife and dug out some bullet holes. So what I'm doing is I'm only uh, painting the chipping where I damaged the kit with the Dremel. At least with a paintbrush anyway. So still working on my weathering and still working on my chipping technique and one thing I know that I have a problem with is over chipping, chipping too much and that's one thing I need to get under control to make my kits look better so this time around I'm only doing chipping where I hit the kit with the Dremel Whereas, when I don't really have a game plan, and I go in doing the uh, chipping with the paintbrush, it just sort of goes everywhere. And I think things end up looking a little bit too 
evenly, uniformly chipped. And uh, my chips start to get, like they'll, they'll start off good when I first start doing it. But then as I get towards the end of the kit, my chips start getting lazier, I think. And start getting out of scale and less uh, detailed. So I'm basically just trying to teach myself more patience. That's what it really comes down to. And hopefully that will pay off on this kit and kits in the future. Okay, and now that the brush chipping is done, I am going to go in with the sponge and do a little bit of sponge chipping just to add some smaller, more random chips in here. And this is one of those techniques that need a little bit of practice at because I know the first time I tried sponge chipping, I just started globbing it on with a sponge and it looked terrible. So it may look easy, but it's definitely one of those techniques you have to uh, practice restraint with. Because otherwise, it can start to look really really bad really quick and see this is adding actually see if I can zoom in on this there we go. this is adding some like almost microscopic chips on here very very small tried to zoom in but that uh, my camera wouldn't want to cooperate a couple on the chin there so yeah it was very important to dab off the excess paint on uh, a paper towel or something Because you definitely don't want the sponge to be too wet. Alright, I think that looks good. Okay, so now I have uh, completely top coated the entire kit with a uh, semi gloss lacquer, and now I am in the process of doing my wash. I've got some oil paints here, I just uh, got a little bit of gray, black, and brown, and mix it with some thinner, and now I've got a wash. And I'm just sort of doing it the same way I always do. The only difference is I'm actually using uh, artist's oil paints this time around, which is something that a lot of uh, like armor modelers do for tanks and stuff. And a lot, a lot of Gunpla modelers, a lot of the veteran modelers uh, use oil paints. So I'm giving this a try to see how I like it and see what the pros and cons of it are and right now I'm just doing a wash uh, I'm not doing anything basically than just panel lines at this point and uh, I'm gonna let this uh, dry overnight after I get these uh, spots cleaned up and then I'm going to come back and do some more weathering with the oil paints after that. Okay, and now that the wash is done, I am going in and doing some uh, streaking and rust stains. And I've got some oil paints mixed here. I've got a rust color and a dark brown. And... I'm just going in with a teeny tiny bit of that and putting it not everywhere where there's chipping. I don't want to overwhelm this thing with rust. Just in the places where there's especially deep chipping, like where I did the bullet holes and stuff. Just a teeny tiny little dab of 
this rust color. Don't need a whole lot at all. This oil paint goes a really long way. You will be very surprised at how little you actually need. So I'm just doing this and uh, I'm going to clean my brush off with a little bit of paint thinner. And some of the, a lot of tutorials I've watched uh, suggest taking the, uh, the oil paint thinner and actually using that on your brush to make these streaking effects. But I found that uh, I've been getting by pretty well with just doing a dry brush. Like, it's not completely dry. I just uh, wash it off with a little bit of thinner and then... Uh, wiped it off on a paper towel and so there's still a little bit of paint thinner on there but not very much at all and I'm gonna go in let's see if I can get my camera to actually focus on it maybe there we go so I'm gonna go in in the places where I put those little bits of that rust colored paint I'm just gonna pull down and that's gonna give us our sort of rain streaked rust effect just like that and it's obviously not going to show up quite as well on the darker colored parts but it's showing up really well on the white parts and rust is something I don't usually do on Gumpla because uh, I don't know I just I guess I'm always I've always been afraid of overwhelming the kit with rust, but for this particular kit I'm really kind of forcing myself to be as subtle as I can. So anyway, you get the general idea. Just going in and wherever I've put the little bits of rust colored paint, I'm just pulling down in the direction of gravity and that's causing some nice rusty streaks running down the model kit and you can, uh, the more you work these in with the paintbrush the softer they're going to get so if you put enough thinner on your brush and just kept working, 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 you can uh, just completely erase them. Or you can get them to be super soft and subtle, whichever one you want to do. Alright, doing a little bit more oil work. This time I'm doing some white streaks. And what these are going to simulate is like uh, discoloration from sun and rain and just general being out in the weather so I'm just sort of spotting some white paint on some of these parts don't need a whole lot just teeny tiny little bits of white paint I'm gonna clean off my brush and just like with the rust stains, I'm just going to pull down and blend those out. And I'm um, being even more uh, conservative with these than I was with the rust stains because I want the general look of this kit to be pretty dark. So I'm not going to have the white streaking in too many places. and it's a very very subtle effect it's something you can really only see when you uh, get up close to it but I like it and it adds another layer of weathering to the kit okay so I have now top coated the entire kit uh, to seal off 
all the uh, wash and the oils that I just did. Uh, this is the final co top coat I did flat and now I am doing the final stages. Uh, it's actually my first time trying this. Uh, I've seen armor modelers do this before and some mecha modelers as well. Uh, using graphite on your uh, uh, damaged places to give them more of a metallic sheen. Now graphite, which is the stuff that's in pencils, uh, has kind of a natural steel uh, color to it that looks really really good. And basically anywhere where I've got chipping or bullet holes or uh, any scrapes or anything like that that I want really highlighted, I'm going in with a pencil and highlighting those edges and what that's doing is that's bringing giving a nice metallic highlight to those areas and I know it might be kind of hard to see from here uh, let me zoom in a bit let's see if I can get another one. Oh yeah here's a good one All right, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this armor part right here there we go all right, so I'm just going over these areas. There, see, see it catching in the light there. It's giving a nice, real natural metal color to those damaged areas. And it's just another layer of uh, weathering that's going to make it look a bit more realistic. I'm doing it with a pencil also I've got uh, this is a graphite stick basically just a big chunk of graphite with no wood around it and I can also use this for larger areas like uh, if I want to do this piece I want to just sort of go over it like that lightly and instead of covering up everything with graphite it's just gonna catch the raised areas and give a sort of an all over scrape to it and also I can just go along the edges like this and put that metallic sheen on the edges like that so uh, new to this but I really like the way it's looking I like the way that's turning out alright one last thing I'm doing before uh, final assembly is I was doing the graphite on the uh, battle damage parts and I figured if I could do this with a regular pencil why not try out a colored pencil so uh, I limited the graphite to the places where there was actual battle damage and for all the other areas that aren't damaged I'm using a colored pencil to just go in and highlight the edges and essentially what this is doing is uh, kind of a replacement for dry brushing because normally with dry brushing you would be getting this uh, same effect here having a nice highlight on all the raised edges but this way is uh, a lot easier a lot quicker and a lot less messy since you're using a colored pencil instead of paint and also uh, you have a lot more precision with a pencil rather than a paintbrush. Now granted there are some things you can do with dry brushing that you can't do with a pencil like this, but just for the sake of experimentation I wanted to give this a try. And I don't know if it's really showing up that well on camera, but I've got a little white highlight right along this edge here. And uh, let's see where's another one. Here we go this back skirt piece but right up along these edges and the graphite anyone who's ever drawn a picture with a pencil knows that graphite can smear pretty easily and that is something you have to worry about uh, on the Gumpla which is why I'm wearing gloves so I don't leave pencil -y fingerprints all over the kit. But the colored pencil seems to have a lot more binder in the, uh, the whatever this is called in the middle of the pencil. Um, 
and this doesn't smear nearly as much as the graphite so you don't have to really worry about it too much on this so I'm gonna finish this up uh, I'm using the white for the white parts uh, like for the blue parts I've got a light sky blue color pencil I'm gonna use just like that to go in and put a little bit of highlight on those edges just like so and then I've got pink for the red parts I can go in and do that so I'm gonna finish this up and then get this guy finally put together okay and with everything put together the Barbatos Lupus Rex is finally complete and I'm actually very very happy with this uh, overall I think I over weathered it a little bit as usual that I like I have a habit of doing but uh, I wasn't really trying to uh, make the weathering subtle I wanted it to be relatively heavy heavy weathering like on my first Barbatos so they can kind of match raise this up a little bit so uh, I think it definitely looks better my first Barbatos I really like uh, how some of the effects came out. This is very much an experimental kit for me. I tried a lot of new techniques on here with the oils and the graphite and the colored pencils and uh, all different kind of things and I'm definitely liking some of the effects that I did. Uh, all, of, all the new techniques that I tried are definitely going to need some practice to perfect them but uh, I definitely see the potential in uh, all the new stuff I tried out on this guy and I'm very very happy with the way uh, things are looking and I'm excited to try some of these techniques on more kits in the future so in that regard I will definitely call this kit a success so that is a Barbatos Lupus Rex uh, Here's the weapon here. They basically gave it the same treatment as I did the Barbatos, a wash, a little bit. Actually, I didn't do a whole lot of oil work on here. I really only did uh, the wash and then a little bit of rust staining around the bullet holes. And then did the, uh, the graphite and the colored pencils for the uh, edge highlights. So, overall, pretty pleased with how it turned out. And very much looking forward to trying some of these techniques on more kits in the future. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.